Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brian Connors, chairman of the board of the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our 2018 State of the City Address with this year's theme of Temecula Safe. Today we're honored to have Mayor Matt Ron, who will share with us the city of Temecula's accomplishments, visions, and goals. We appreciate your attendance and are sure you will enjoy this year's event. Now, please rise for the presentation of our nation's colors as we welcome the Temecula Police Department Honor Guard and this will be immediately followed by Cal Fire Local 2881 Pipes and Drums. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we honor our great nation as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. Please remain standing as we welcome the Phoenix Patriot Band, who will be performing the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see? So proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars. And the home of the brave 
first responders. What a way to wake us up, right? Hey, that Patriot Band right there, if you've noticed, a number of veterans that served us in the military that are in that band. Very unique presentation of our colors and the national anthem. How proud it is that we are Americans, ladies and gentlemen. Love living in the, the land of the free. Matt Ron has served on the city council since 2014. He works tirelessly to ensure that Temecula preserves and carefully plans its future, providing the guidance that continues to make our city great. During his two, first two years, Matt has led the charge on developing a senior master plan for our city, facilitating regional communication and cooperation on water issues, advancing higher education opportunities, and developing community-based programs to improve public safety. It is with great pleasure that I welcome to the stage Mayor Matt Ron. Good morning. Is it your birthday today? It is. Oh, <laughs> man. Hang on a second. He can't go anywhere. I just found out as I'm coming up here. It's this man's birthday. <laughs> He's, uh, he just turned 42. Thank you. Quick round of a happy 39. birthday. Quick round of a happy birthday. Come on, let's embarrass him. Happy birthday to you. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brian. <laughs> happy birthday to you. All right. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. All right, well, that's a good start to the morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, that was an absolutely amazing uh, flag salute. Our very own Temecula Police Department served as our color guard. Uh, thank you to four of our finest for giving us uh, that opportunity to see them in action. And of course, our firefighters playing pipes and drums. Uh, thank you, Cal Fire Local 2881, for your service. I have to say it's quite an honor to have them uh, present uh, with us this morning. Uh, they typically only play at important functions, so I'm not sure why they sh decided to show up. Uh, but uh, they have uh, invaluable service uh, to our community and to support the families of our fallen firefighters. Uh, we're very honored to have them here today. And of course, representing nations, veterans, and military, the Phoenix Patriot Band. Uh, they are a local... Yeah. They are a local nonprofit organization that teaches wounded and injured veterans to play instruments and music. It was a fantastic rendition of the national anthem from our own veteran family. Uh, please visit their table over at the expo as well if you get a chance to afterwards. Um, and just as a note, interesting uh, side note, the uh, drummer uh, happens to be the son of one of our very first council members, Carl Lindemann. So, small world. Uh, speaking about the uh, Expo and our nonprofit organizations, uh, don't forget to check out the other 58 nonprofit organizations uh, that have joined us here this morning. Um, we've exceeded our nonprofit Expo tables by 18 this year. Uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a deep testament to our vast charitable community here in Temecula. 
and we thank you all for your service uh, to our city. And good morning, everyone. Thank you all for being here. It is my privilege to serve as Temecula's mayor in 2018. This is my fourth year on the city council and my first time as mayor, uh, and I'm honored to be here presenting my very first State of the City address. Now, you might have noticed that this year's theme is Temecula Safe. Each year, the city of Temecula, <laughs> there we go. Uh, each year, the city of Temecula places its highest priority on public safety in terms of our budget and in terms of importance. So this year, we're shining a spotlight on the high quality of life that our citizens, businesses, and visitors enjoy as a result of being this safe city. As a safe community, uh, it's really the most influential factor when we make our largest personal investments, such as buying a home or opening up a store or a business. It's a cornerstone of a thriving tourist destination and supports positive commerce. It's a foundation to the success of any local economy and because everything else seems to fall into place when you live and work in a safe and beautiful community. This is why so many have chosen Temecula as their home. It's certainly not a revolutionary concept. The safety of the people shall be the highest law. You know, over 2,000 years ago, this notion remains very true for every community today. Fortunately, our city has the resources and the will to make Temecula safe our number one priority. It's all about protecting our most precious resource, our people. Indeed, police and fire are the most obvious component and single largest investment in safety. They are our first responders and our insurance policy, making sure that we have the right coverage when we need them most. They are the backbone of any community and really our most fundamental obligation in managing a city. But safeness of our city is an all-encompassing uh, concept and it's part of every department and program. It's traffic safety, ensuring that safe roads, bridges, and infrastructure exist. It's emergency preparedness, public health, and of course our first responders. It's the maintenance of safe parks and playgrounds for our kids. It's uh, safe business districts, safe tourist areas, neighborhoods, shopping, and hotels. Now, I can't wait to dive into all of this and share with you all the projects and programs that are in the pipeline and the wonderful successes our city has had over the past year. But first and foremost, I think I need to recognize a very few special uh, people here. Uh, first, uh, my wife Kelsey and daughter Delilah. You are definitely my inspiration and my reason why. And uh, Kelsey, for those of you who know her, um, I'm sure you would all agree she's definitely my better half. I also wanted to introduce my mom, Nancy, a very strong and inspirational woman who single-handedly raised two boys and gave us a foundation and confidence to be who we are today. Yeah. I'd also like to recognize the Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce, particularly the Board of Directors, Chairman Brian Connors and CEO Alice Sullivan, for being fantastic partners of the city and the greatest asset to our business community. Thank you also to all of those who served on the Chambers Committee and have worked hard to put this event here today. And thank you to all the sponsors who's uh, made all of this possible. To our host, Pachanga, uh, this is really an historical moment for our city. Having this event in this brand new, beautifully expanded hotel and convention center is just an amazing experience. Uh, as uh, hopefully uh, many more to come. Um, and uh, congratulations on just a magnificent resort expansion. <laughs> on behalf of the uh, city of Temecula, we're unbelievably fortunate uh, to, uh, to have our city and the people of Pachanga, its government, its leadership, with such vision and resolution to create a truly remarkable and amazing legacy. Um, we have a few other dignitaries in the audience today as well. Former Temecula mayor who's been our district supervisor for four years, and he's currently serving as chairman of the board this year, third district supervisor, Chuck Washington. <laughs> uh, 
And joining me at my table is Peg Moore, another former council member. <laughs> Peg was elected to the first city council in 1989, uh, and uh, just appreciate you coming out here today and, and being with us here. We also have elected officials from neighboring cities, and I'm not gonna name you all, except for Jonathan Ingram, right? I'm gonna call out Jonathan because he reminded me that we forgot his name on the list again this year. John, so sorry. So everybody, round of applause for Jonathan Ingram. Beautiful city of Marietta. Uh, we, we here refer to it as uh, Temecula Norte, so. <laughs> Uh, we have folks from Marietta, Menifee, Wildemar, Lake Elsinore, Paris, Indio, and of course representatives from Rancho California Water District, Eastern Municipal Water District, Elsinore Valley Municipal Water District, and very proudly to have our uh, Temecula Valley Unified School District here, Mount San Jacinto College, California State University, San Marcos, and of course in healthcare, our Board of Governors from Temecula Valley Hospital and Southwest Healthcare Systems. Our tourism board, visit Temecula Valley, thank you for being here as well. And of course, our district attorney here today, uh, officials from CAL FIRE, Riverside County Sheriff's Department, Temecula Police Department, thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedule and making this room the safest place in Temecula right now. <laughs> so. And importantly, I'd also uh, like to recognize my uh, colleagues on the city council. Mayor Pro Tem Mike Nagar has served on uh, City Council for 19 years, plus two as a planning commissioner. Council Member Jeff Comachero has been with the city for 25 years, uh, starting with four years as a Community Services Commission uh, and 20 years elected to our City Council. Council Member Marianne Edwards began as a Traffic Safety Commissioner in 1998 and since 2005 has served as the longest of any councilwoman in the history of our city. And, <laughs> and of course, Council Member Stu Stewart, our newest member to the uh, Temecula City Council elected in 2016. Uh, he's definitely not new to the community, having lived here since 1991 and having served on our local water board. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge our city manager, Mr. Aaron Adams, who has been with the city for over two decades, and also their executive staff, and of course all the city staff. Uh, if they could all be on the picture, I'd have put them on there, but uh, wonderful, wonderful organization and city to work with. Uh, I'm very proud to work with each one of you in our common goal, which is to protect and preserve the best city in America. Now let's get started here, right? So that was just the preamble. Now let's actually get to, get to the, the, the point of today. You know, as a city, we take our responsibility and our fiscal responsibility very seriously. This means that we maintain the highest quality of life for our citizens and the next generations to come. It includes thoughtful and prospective management of our critical assets, including the maintenance of our streets and our parks, a dedication to preserving our beautiful amenities, ensuring we build the infrastructure we need for a sustainable and logical growth, and providing the highest level of public services to keep Temecula truly safe. We accomplish this through strategic planning of our resources and thoughtful budgeting. But our budget is much more than just a financial document. It is our roadmap to success. It lights the path for our future and provides the transparency and accountability that uh, Temecula maintains its wonderful community. It's a contract with our businesses and our residents, uh, and it's a promise that we never settle for mediocrity, but instead that we maintain diligent progress to ensure that we become the kind of city we all want and expect. Now, we anticipate ending fiscal year 2017-18 with revenues of approximately $76 million, exceeding expenditures of about $74.5 million, of which nearly 55% is dedicated to public safety costs. Temecula Safe continues to be our highest priority, as it should be. And our general fund revenue and expenditures are anticipated to increase by just under $2 million next year. 
In addition, we maintain primary and secondary reserves totaling about 25% of our annual operating costs, which is prudent for any jurisdiction in the event of economic uncertainty. Every year, our budget receives the highest form of recognition in governmental budgeting by the Government Finance Officers Association, as well as excellence in financial reporting. Now, thanks to our outstanding staff, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. Uh, thanks to our outstanding staff that these recognitions, they may seem routine for Temecula, but they certainly aren't. They symbolize the highest standards and excellence in fiscal management of our city. At Temecula, we also proactively budget five years in advance based on priorities, available funding, known impacts, trends, and obligations. I'm very pleased to announce we have once again balanced our operating budget for five years into the future. And five years out is looking very good for the city of Temecula. Today's state of the city message would be entirely different without the passage of Measure S. This may be the most pivotal vote in the history of our city and for many years to come. Our community has already begun to feel the positive effects with 50 miles of neighborhood slurry seal and arterial road repairs, new playgrounds, a significant increase in police protection and resources, a new fire station with eight new firefighters, and so much more. Here's a quick preview of some of the accomplishments completed and funded by Measure S this year. and that's just the first 12 months. We have so much more in the pipeline. Uh, but before I expand on these successes and our future plans, I'd like to thank our business community and our citizens for placing the trust in this city, and it's a trust that we take very seriously. Now, cities face a stark reality about funding resources today. Traditional funding provided by the state of California is frequently taken back or cut altogether. Observing this unfortunate trend, the city took a careful, albeit controversial step, to secure a safe and responsible future. We recognize that we cannot simply rely on our state or federal government <clears throat> to protect our city or provide the funding needed for infrastructure safety. We made a promise to our community. When we created our general plan, our specific plans, and the variety of master plans that we have, we made a promise to our future. 
We were thoughtful and proactive in creating these plans for our senior community, our youth, our parks and trail systems, and even our growth and quality of life. Those commitments to our community were in no small part based on state and federal funding and continuing their commitment and promise to improve our infrastructure and our transportation corridors. Sadly, while our promises were kept, theirs were not. However, Measure S cannot be funneled away by Sacramento. That extra penny of sales tax and every penny of it stays right here in the city of Temecula. And it's also important to note that roughly half of the city's sales tax revenue comes from the visitors that shop and stay in Temecula. This is a remarkable benefit of being a tourist destination, thanks in large part to the tremendous success of our local businesses, wineries, Old Town, this amazing resort, and all of you. We now have the resources to ensure a bright future for our city. And this is more important now than ever. State legislation requires the early release of criminals. In fact, about 45,000 early releases have occurred in Riverside County alone since the passage of AB 109. Further, many of our felonies have been reduced to merely misdemeanors, making law enforcement's job even harder. But again, it's our promise to our community to keep Temecula safe. The recent increase of our police department by over 10% and opening the new fire station at Roropah could not have come at a better time. So let's go ahead and take a look at how our city has been able to keep safe in the face of these challenges. At the heart of Measure S is our commitment to ensure proper funding of public safety. So being a statistics guy, if you know, I'm all about numbers, so I'm gonna bore you here for just a moment. Uh, comparing 2017 first quarter to 2018, so before and after Measure S, there have been some remarkable changes. The number of injury collisions in the city of Temecula reduced from 92 to 73. That's 19 less injury collisions in the first three months of this year. The simple increased presence of added traffic officers deters drivers from speeding or running red lights and significantly reduces those accidents. Graffiti is down by an amazing 47%, from roughly 12,600 square feet down to just over 6,000. Certainly, it's important that that added police presence helps deter taggers. And one of the most incredible statistics, I have to say, is the average response time for priority one calls by our Temecula Police Department. This has reduced by a whopping 33%, or three minutes and seven seconds. For our highest priority calls, this can be the difference between a successful outcome or a tragedy. And never being satisfied with the status quo, our Temecula Police Department now has a new substation located within the Community Recreation Center on Rancho Vista Road for internal use allowing our officers to drop in, write reports, log on to a computer docking station, and importantly, keep a watchful eye on neighboring sports parks and the community recreation center. By the way, next week, Temecula Police Department will be hosting an active shooter training for our community at City Hall. If you're interested, please check out our website for more information. Measure S is also funding the update of our citywide surveillance systems to bring it to today's standards which will really improve the overall safety and security at our public parks, our facilities and intersections, because cameras deter crime from even occurring, and they can be an invaluable resource to the police and traffic officials and investigators when needed. Now, as you may know, I've spent uh, a lot of time working with our firefighters, and they have a special place in my heart. I've spent over a decade working with them on research and education programs related to attack effectiveness, firefighter health and safety, and community resilience. We're very proud to have opened the fifth fire station in January of this year in the Roarpaw Ranch area. It's already relieving tremendous pressure off the other fire stations and improving response times throughout our city, uh, and especially in that northeastern portion of Temecula. As a result, we can now provide better protection to the residents and businesses throughout Temecula, and during its four, first four months of operation, 
Roarpaw Ranch Fire Engine number 95 has responded to over 500 calls for service. Incidentally, our firefighters respond to nearly 9,000 calls for service annually in Temecula. And we staff our fire engines with four firefighters, the nationally recognized standard for fire departments. We are certainly blessed to be one of the few jurisdictions in California that's able to maintain this level of protection, which means our community receives the best level of service across the full spectrum of responses, including medical aids, traffic collisions, structure fires, wildfires, and other natural disasters. And of special note, one of the new relationships and programs that I'm most proud of is with our amazing district attorney, Mr. Mike Hestron. We look forward to engaging his office in a variety of new ways, including our involvement in their gang and drug task force, sexual assault task force, and their emerging cannabis task force. We are dedicating space at City Hall for their use, where a deputy DA will be able to work closely with our city and law enforcement to facilitate improved access and prosecution. We hope this serves as an example for other cities to enhance their own public safety programs, and we thank DA Hestron for his dedication and support. <laughs> the benefits and investment in a safe community far outweigh the alternative. Cities across America often decline because of a lack of funding for public safety and a lack of funding for services and infrastructure. Our citizens were resolved to not allow that to happen in Temecula. I'm proud to say that we have the highest level of services and support, which serves as a benchmark for how a city should be run. The city's theme this year, Temecula Safe, is comprehensive. Obviously, police and fire are the cornerstone of public safety. And we should be extremely proud and grateful of the hardworking individuals who go to work every day to protect our community. Temecula Fire Department operates five fire stations, five engines with four-person staffing, one truck company with four-person staffing. Temecula Fire has the highest trained firefighters in the nation, and we are an all-risk, all-hazard fire department. It truly is an honor and a privilege to lead such an amazing group of men and women that make up our Temecula Police Department. When Measure S passed, we did increase our police force. We went from 100 positions to 111. We went from 180 patrol hours to 200 hours, which equates to about 41 officers in the field. I think just the mere presence is really making a difference. I'm proud that we've been able to uh, work with our community to help them understand the importance of investment in public safety. With the passage of Measure S, we were able to hire new personnel to start our prevention annual inspection program. Along with that, we are in the process of currently replacing our ladder truck at Station 73 in the Rancho California area. We pride ourselves in doing a lot of interagency training. We train with the Sheriff's Department, Temecula Police Department. We do interactions with Pechanga, Marietta, and multiple county agencies. Temecula has trained all of its folks at active shooters. All of our personnel have been issued ballistic um, safety equipment and state-of-the-art medical equipment to treat patients during active shooter emergencies. Temecula uh, remains one of the safest cities in the country because of primarily a, a spirit of cooperation between city, uh, county, uh, government officials, and their law enforcement. And we have an incredible law enforcement presence in this county and especially in this region. And that spirit of, of cooperation and collaboration really produces some incredible uh, groups that, that, that come together for, for Temecula to make it uh, safe. We don't have the gang problems that some of the other cities have because we have so many special teams. We are so actively preventing crime by the different special assignments that we have. It's more proactive policing as opposed to reactive. We want them to be out there and looking for crime, following up on crime so that they can prevent crime from occurring. Temecula Fire has several programs that uh, we take pride in. One is our community outreach program through our resident paramedic. So he teaches community CPR, community CERT, which is our citizens emergency response team classes and this teaches the public CPR, automatic defibrillator use, 
and how to handle themselves in an emergency such as an earthquake. We are one of the safest regions in the country and, and in the state, uh, but we, we can't uh, become complacent. We have to be proactive. We have to continue to, to think and, and be not only tough on crime, but smart on crime. And being smart on crime requires the, the different agencies. It requires gathering data. It requires using big data in a way where we're putting the, the resources exactly where we need them at exactly the right time. That's the, that's the future of law enforcement, that, that innovative, cutting-edge approach that we see here in Temecula and in this region. With our mutual aid agreements and our cooperative agreement, if Temecula has a major disaster or a major wildland fire or any fire that's beyond our capabilities, we can tap into those mutual aid agreements and bring additional equipment into the city to help us mitigate our emergencies. One of the big things that I wanted to accomplish when I took over as the police chief was to introduce a social media unit. So we have a Facebook page for the Temecula Police Department and previously we'd post press releases and uh, maybe some feel-good stories, but we weren't very interactive. And so I truly believe it's important that we interact with our community and we need to be available for our community. So um, I created a team of eight officers. I have a sergeant on the team, a lieutenant, and then a motor officer, an investigator. So kind of a wide variety of assignments so that they can cover all aspects of what the police department does. Uh, we, we rely on the public to let us know what their concerns are. If, if for example, if, if the public is noticing problems in a park or a region, even if those problems are maybe are, are apparently or seem minor, let somebody know. Temecula Fire prides itself in keeping Temecula safe. We're constantly striving to keep above and beyond the, the new technologies that are taking place, and we look forward to bringing these new, innovative ways to Temecula. Temecula still remains one of the safest cities in the nation, and we pride ourselves as, as being such. Today, we actually have two full-time canine officers, and Deka, she is the perfect canine for Temecula. I like to refer to her as our diva dog, but when it's time for her to turn it on and go to work, she goes to work mode. So our officers train once a week with the Riverside Sheriff's Department canine unit. So they attend that group training, but then when they come back, they do their own individual training. And a lot of times what they'll do is try and get other officers at the station to assist. And our own mayor, Matt Ron, was gracious enough to assist in the training. And they did uh, an afternoon out here at City Hall and he did a fabulous job. All right, and I would like to uh, uh, welcome Deka to the stage here. You're such a good girl. Yes, you are. Keep our community safe. Matt, Thanks. thank you so much. They were just going to have her run up on stage, and then they were like, well, you know, <laughs> might not be the best idea. And I, of course, said, well, what could go wrong? So anyway, um, you know, it's, it's our responsibility and our priority that our city is safe. Uh, and attractively maintained so that our local economy and our businesses can continue to prosper. Economically, now is a better time than ever to invest and reinvest in the city of Temecula. Earlier this month, it was reported that California is now the fifth largest economy in the world, all by itself. Now larger than the United Kingdom, surpassed only by China, Japan, Germany, and of course the rest of the United States. And one of the brightest stars within the fifth largest economy in the world is the city of Temecula, absolutely, for a number of very qualified reasons, and not just because I'm biased, right? We all know doing an, uh, a business in California is, you know, it's expensive, right? Yet for Temecula, that's not entirely true. In fact, uh, it's relatively the opposite here. Temecula is ranked among the top 5% of cities with the lowest cost for businesses in the state of California, 
for the 2017 cost of business survey conducted by the Rose Institute. And we are within the top 10% of cities within the lowest cost for businesses within the entire Western United States. Incidentally, Temecula also has the lowest annual business license fee among all cities in our county. There is a noticeable trend that each time unemployment rates are published, Temecula's unemployment rate remains at all times lower than the county, the state, and the nation. And it's currently holding steady in the 3% range. In fact, 3.1 recently reported. Uh, we've been there for over half a year, and it is the lowest it's been in the history of the city of Temecula. Uh, the State of Employment uh, and Development Department now reports that there are approximately 55,000 jobs in Temecula in our, our, our local region, which is at an all-time high accounting for the majority of jobs in southwest Riverside County. Temecula's average income has increased by an astonishing 12.9% since last year to nearly $110,000. The high quality of life in Temecula drives our home values to be the highest in southwest Riverside County. Yet conversely, Temecula offers the lowest property tax base of all cities throughout Riverside County at 1.03%. Our strong property values and local economy correlates with an excellent school district. And it's no surprise that Temecula Valley Unified School District is ranked the top school district in our county for its academics, which its high schools now rank among the best in the nation according to the 2018 US News and World Report. Congratulations. Sales in Temecula per capita are twice as high as that of the state or the county. And in simple terms, this means that a lot of shopping happens right here in Temecula. We not only have a strong eco economic base, but we are also a very important and growing tourist destination. And our visitors are definitely making purchases while they're here in Temecula. Uh, thank you also to the Temecula Valley Chamber for your continued promotion to our residents to shop local. There is just, sorry, I heard you in the back, woo. Uh, there is just so much uh, good news that our economic development department uh, began a YouTube video and, and show called Good News of the Week, on location, talking about the latest good things that are happening in the city of Temecula. Also, another new and favorite video series of mine is our Merchant Minute, spotlighting merchants in Temecula. If you're a merchant, you have a store here in town and you're interested in being featured, please call our economic development team. We're happy to help. And for a preview of community events and services, check out the Around and About Temecula video series. It's another YouTube hit featuring everything that's fun in our city. If you are in Old Town, you can watch these videos and anything online using the city's recently expanded free Wi-Fi coverage from arch to arch on Front Street and all along Mercedes Street. We hope this keeps our visitors in Old Town happily shopping and dining. The economic development and marketing efforts by the city, Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce, Visit Temecula Valley, Wine Growers Association, and others have been quite effective. And they've been effective internationally as well. In 2017, the Los Angeles Times reported that Temecula had an infusion of foreign capital that is pouring into the wine region, which plans to double the number of wineries in the area to over 100. And cheers to you, Temecula Valley Wine Country, on 50 years. 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of Temecula Valley's uh, Southern California Wine Country. The first modern commercial vineyard was planted in 1968 by the late Vincenzo, Saluruzo and his wife, Audrey. Businesses across all sectors in our valley and our tourism industry have so much to be proud of. Their efforts have put Temecula on the map and our commitment as a city is to provide the environment you all need to thrive. Our city has incredible opportunities for visitors, families, and friends. It's one of the most important qualities of our city and significantly contributes to our quality of life and our economic growth. 
Visit Temecula Valley is an organization that really was the brainchild of the Chamber of Commerce of Temecula. We started as a committee of tourism people that got together and discussed tourism in the valley and we're a marketing organization whose goal is to market the Temecula Valley to visitors and to groups. The Temecula Valley Chamber of Commerce has been in the valley for over 50 years. It's been an amazing partner with the city, but not only a partner with the city, it allows businesses to grow and to connect, and that's where we come into play. And when we connect businesses together, they have an opportunity to really expand. Tourism is a huge economic driver in the Temecula Valley. That's 7,300 jobs that are related to the tourism industry. This last year, we welcomed 2.8 million visitors to the Temecula Valley. And we're a huge part of what's going on in Temecula. You see that within our city, within high-end hotels coming into the downtown area, the restaurants, the retail, within our wine country. And obviously with Pechanga's expansion is really legendary when you think about it. The number of rooms they've offered, the expansion to their spa, to their facilities for um, groups and bringing in that type of activity is something that is, is amazing to our destination. We know a lot of families that have moved here over the years. They love to work, live, play, and have their own business here. Whether it's large or small, it's absolutely beautiful Southern California living. We really want a sense of arrival when people come into our area. When they drive down the 15 freeway, we want them to know that they've arrived at a really special place. And that really comes with branding and it really comes with a beautification as they enter our destination. Well manicured lawns and beautiful landscaping and signage, that's all part of an arrival to a destination. Um, we're really excited to put together an I-15 beautification plan that was recently adopted by the city of Temecula. Our visitors will know when they've arrived in a really unique destination. When there's a safe environment, it attracts more customers as well. People feel safe going out and about, whether it's in the beautiful wine country of Temecula Valley, or in downtown, Old Town, or just by the mall. Whether it's early morning or in late at night, they feel good about it. And that attracts more customers because of the safeness of the city. Temecula is one of the safest cities and tourists really love that about our destination. They know that when they come here they're going to be well taken care of and they don't have to worry about activities that you know really some of the other destinations really they do have to worry about. So that's something that's unique about Temecula and a reason why tourists would like to come here. In, in 2016, Visit Temecula Valley reported that the annual travel spending had risen to an amazing $712 million a year. I imagine that number will be rising with so many hotels in the pipeline. Uh, this amazing resort uh, we are sitting in is worth another mention. Uh, Chairman Maccaro and uh, the, uh, the PDC board and all of those on the Tribal Council, uh, your vision has just been absolutely outstanding. Um, this $300 million resort expansion, completed just months ago, has a four and a half acre pool complex, an additional 568 hotel rooms and suites, a luxury standalone spa, two new restaurants, and another 68,000 square feet of meeting and event space, resulting in 560 new permanent jobs and a $550 million economic impact to the entire region. This encompasses uh, uh, growth in tourism, benefits other area businesses, and uh, this summer, Pechanga will be hosting artists Pitbull, Steve Martin, Martin Short, among other big names, and Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, if you guys were able to attend, uh, kicked off the grand opening uh, a few months ago. Uh, it's an impressive lineup that just keeps getting better and better. Uh, and folks, eight more hotels are now processing within the city limits. The first is the stunning Truex luxury hotel development on 3rd Street that was recently approved. They are now preparing the lot for construction. This will be the first full service upscale luxury hotel in Old Town with a valet parking structure across the street designed to match this beautiful amenity. Two more hotels are under construction, including a Best Western Plus just north of Old Town Arches and a four-story Hilton Homes to Suites within our business park. 
Three other hotels were recently improved, including another upscale four-story hotel on 4th Street in Old Town, with underground parking and featuring a restaurant on the first floor. A four-story Staybridge Suites on Jefferson Avenue and a three-story Hilton Garden Inn also on Jefferson. Finally, two more hotels are in the planning and review stage, another on Jefferson at the corner of Winchester Road and an application for a 29-room hotel at the corner of 6th Street and Mercedes in Old Town. As our Old Town continues to grow as the heart of our city, attracting other commercial developments, uh, we now have uh, new developments, including a three-story office and retail building on Old Town Front and 4th Street. Also in Old Town, the Town Square Marketplace, another Truax development, has been approved in front of the City Hall in the vacant lots with a mix of retail, restaurant, and uh, other amenities. And the Stampede is renovating its building with a 4,000 square foot addition to their property, adding other uses, including a restaurant, along with an extensive facade improvement. Just west of Old Town, above Pujol Street, is the Altair specific plan. It was recently approved, 1,500 residential units, some commercial, parks, trails, and this project will improve traffic through the city with a four-lane western bypass road from Temecula Parkway to Rancho California Road. Temecula also has approximately 900 multifamily units and 400 single-family homes in the planning pipeline, either under construction now or in planning review. And with regard to senior housing, uh, I commissioned a senior master plan a few years back. Senior housing was identified as one of the highest priorities in our community. And since then, the city has had five senior living and assisted care projects approved, including two that are newly constructed. And we continue to have ongoing dialogue with area developers regarding affordable senior, veteran, and special needs housing. The senior master plan has also led to a variety of new services to assist seniors in our community. One of my favorite is the new Silver Shuttle service that provides Temecula senior citizens free transportation from the Mary Phillips Senior Center in Old Town to various destinations, including restaurants and shopping. Additionally, we have about 350,000 square feet of industrial space in the planning process, of which two projects have almost completed construction. This is good because it's associated with good local jobs. Over on Temecula Parkway, the Gateway Project is nearly complete. It's uh, a beautifully designed Western-themed retail center that includes a fitness center, a gas station, and a drive through Starbucks. And if you're like me, I personally appreciate that last opportunity to grab some caffeine before I head on the highway in the morning. So I would be remiss if I also didn't highlight the city's single most popular Facebook post that was shared over 1,000 times, has 11,000 comments, and is reaching approximately 132,000 people. As one of the most unique touch points to our community, can you guess what this is? It's the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> yes, they formally submitted plans for a 9,300 square foot restaurant at the Promenade Temecula. There is more Promenade Temecula news as well. Uh, the first floor of Sears is turning into Round One Entertainment, offering a bowling alley, arcade, and other types of family amusement. There will also be a new restaurant at this location, and Promenade Temecula continues its dedication as the region's premier shopping and entertainment district. And I'd like to also acknowledge our auto dealers and the important service and contribution they make to our city. The autos and transportation sector continues to be at the top of our local economy. As new auto dealers choose to invest in our city, such as Audi last year, sales tax revenue, of course, has increased. DCH has just finished their showroom expansion as well, and we appreciate these kinds of investments. In fact, Temecula has experienced 30 consecutive quarters of growth in this very important industry. Of course, it's not just the auto sales that make these folks such amazing parts of our community. Their sincere commitment to our community philanthropy, and their deep hearts make them an invaluable asset to the city of Temecula. Our very own award-winning Temecula Valley Hospital recently expanded by another 29,000 square feet. 
Their open house is in two days, so I hope everybody's uh, able to attend. They are increasing their level of stroke services, and this summer they will become the only hospital in the region to offer advanced neurosciences stroke care with a neurointerventional operating room. Currently, patients that need this kind of care are either flown to Los Angeles or San Diego. So congratulations are also in order for their fourth consecutive time receiving an A grade for patient safety and hospital quality. And they were also recognized with the top hospital award by the LeapFrog Group. Only six hospitals in California have received this prestigious top hospital honor. As someone who has worked in higher education and research for over 20 years, and that's when everybody's like, ah, oh, 20 years, you seem way too young for that. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'm very excited uh, to see the amazing new growth in this extremely consequential sector of Temecula. We continue to work closely with our academic partners, Mount San Jacinto College and California State University, San Marcos. They provide hundreds of students, local students, hometown and regional access to earn certificates, associate degrees, bachelor degrees, without ever having to leave this beautiful city. This model has been a huge success, so much so it appears they needed more space. I'm pleased to say that MSJC has completed the very timely purchase of 350,000 square feet Three hundred and fifty thousand square feet of Class A office space right here in the middle of Temecula. This roughly equals the size of all the buildings at the district's Menifee campus that serves more than fifteen thousand students today. Temecula now has its own dedicated footprint for a truly world-class center for higher education, anticipated to be fully operational by fall of next year. This will fundamentally change our city for the better. Existing programs offered by MSJC and Cal State San Marcos now have plenty of room to grow. They can better serve important sectors of our local economy by providing advanced education in key areas, including healthcare, business, tourism management, and so many others. New education and training programs will emerge that meet our regional need and are responsive to our job markets and local economic growth. Our children and our adults can continue on their educational journey right here in Temecula. And of course, the synergy between higher education and our local businesses will allow them to find local jobs and stay in the city that they call home. In fact, just as an aside, I'm proud to say that Temecula is now home to the first ever bachelor's degree in wildfire science and the wildland urban interface. It's the first of its kind in the country. Now I have to say for full disclosure, I'm the director of that program, so <laughs> kind of proud of it. Shameless, shameless plug. So, you know, we do what we can. When you've got the microphone, you say whatever you want to say. Uh, I look forward to uh, working uh, to provide advanced research and education on wildfires, which is really one of the most consequential and economically impactful issues that faces our uh, region, our nation, and our state. With development uh, comes infrastructure, which is the next largest investment for the city. Several roadway infrastructure and traffic safety improvements are in progress. Let's go ahead and take a look. To make you safe means we work hard to maintain and improve our roads and infrastructures. This includes aggressively tackling our traffic issues, thoughtfully expanding our roadways, maintaining our bridges, and ensuring properly paved streets and sidewalks. The city has had uh, a great amount of growth recently because the city has been so successful and people want to come to Temecula, it has generated additional traffic. So our department, the Public Works Department, has been working on projects to be able to increase the capacity of the roadway systems, both by adding lanes and widening roads, as well as making the roadway system more efficient, improving the operation of the traffic signals and improving the overall circulation throughout the city. So another project that's in the works and was part of a recently approved development project is a road named the Western Bypass. 
that is the extension of Temecula Parkway to the west, four lane arterial road going from Temecula Parkway to Rancho California Road and intersecting Rancho California at Diaz. And then Diaz Road will be extended to the north up to the northern city boundary as a four lane arterial road as well. The project here behind us, the Interstate 15 and, and South 79 or Temecula Parkway interchange project. This project is designed to alleviate congestion as well as improve the safety of the interchange, traffic getting on and off the freeway, and make the overall function of the interchange much more efficient and safe. The budget for that project is approximately $50 million. One of the contributors to this project has been the Pachanga tribe who contributed a significant amount of resources so that this interchange could be reconstructed. The project is on schedule. The anticipated completion date is December of 2018. We're planning to widen Butterfield Stage Road from Rancho California Road to La Serena. So we'll be adding lanes going both north and south on Butterfield Stage Road. We'll also be improving the intersection at Rancho California Road and Butterfield Stage Road. It's the main entrance into wine country. So that intersection will function much better and be much more safe. One of the other capacity enhancing projects is to widen Inez Road from La Paz to Rancho Vista Road in order to make that a four lane road all the way down to La Paz on the south end. That will add a significant amount of capacity for Inez on the eastern side of the 15. Another aspect of our traffic circulation program is just the operation of our traffic signals in general. And we have and are continuing to work on the coordination of our traffic signals along the main corridors throughout the city so that vehicles can travel along those corridors and attempt to uh, have green lights along those corridors as, as frequently as possible. We recently have updated our pavement management program. We hired a consultant to rate the condition of all of the streets throughout the city and we'll be using that data to prioritize where we do pavement maintenance and rehabilitation projects. We recently completed the rehabilitation of Margarita Road from Temecula Parkway to Rancho California Road. We're in the process of working on the rehabilitation of Rancho California Road from Jefferson Avenue to the western city limits. We'll be doing a slurry seal project on residential streets uh, we'll be doing 50 miles of slurry seal on residential streets every year so that we can do all streets throughout the city every five or six years. All the improvements that are underway in 2018 are intended to make the circulation system work more effectively and to make Temecula safe. All right, so we're gonna do a quick experiment. If we could bring up the lights for a moment. And everybody, if you wouldn't mind just standing up for, for a moment, please. I'm all about data and I'm all about research and so forth. So I got a quick question. Everybody has to get to work somehow, get to their jobs, get to their uh, you know, offices or whatever. If your commute is less than a mile, I want you to put your hands together like this, right? If your commute is uh, you know, one to five miles, Put your hands a little bit farther apart. Five to 10 miles, a little bit farther apart. Anything over 50, way out here. All right. All right, now hold that, hold that. All right, thank you. You can all be seated. So years from now, when I look back on those pictures, I'm gonna remember this day as being the day I received a standing ovation for my State of the City address. <laughs> So uh, I appreciate everybody uh, taking that time with me there. All right. So going back to the seriousness of uh, transportation, uh, we do have a few other projects in the pipeline. Uh, Overland Drive extension to Diaz Road. Uh, Overland Drive on the east side of the creek is under construction and should be completed this summer. The design for a bridge to extend over the creek to Diaz Road is in process for a federal grant next year. Pachanga Parkway will be widened from Via Gilberto to North Casino Drive, funded by Pachanga. Construction will begin this summer and will last for about six months. Temecula Park and Ride on Temecula Parkway is under construction and should be done by August. Nicholas Road will be extended to reach Butterfield Stage Road. 
And of course, at the forefront of traffic congestion is Interstate 15. Temecula Valley, our segment of Highway 15 is confirmed to be among the 10 worst traffic hotspots in the United States, according to an Intrex study, National Traffic Research Company. So I gotta say, a city with a population of about 113,000 should not be on that top 10 list. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the core problem we face uh, is that the freeway is not technically the city's jurisdiction or our responsibility. No city should have to pay hundreds of millions of dollars for state and federal highway projects, yet here we are. Had we not taken the lead on the Temecula Parkway interchange, it would still not be under construction. Mayor Pro Tem Mike Nagar and I formed a regional Move I-15 through Temecula Valley Task Force. The name just rolls off the tongue. <laughs> we have six cities, two tribes, state, county, federal representatives, regional transportation partners, and Marine Corps-based Camp Pendleton now on this task force. Uh, and I'd like to also thank again, just because I love Murrieta, John Ingram sitting with me as co-chair for that task force this year. Frankly, it shouldn't be this complicated to pave the median of our freeway, nor should the city of Temecula or Pechanga be responsible for subsidizing the state and federal government. Now, I've been to D.C. several times this year, and I'd like to personally thank our congressmen for the support they've provided to Temecula and our region on this issue. I will continue our advocacy for our city at the state and federal capitals and will not rest until we see significant improvements in our transportation infrastructure. Like I said, we kept our promise of the kind of city we envisioned. It's time they keep their promise to provide the kind of uh, transportation infrastructure that we desperately need. Congressman Calvert and Congressman Hunter have also been an advocate to the city's application for the French Valley Interchange Project. This is much more than just an interchange. The French Valley Project includes two additional collector and distributor lanes along I-15 from Winchester to the 215 split, which will greatly reduce traffic congestion and ease that split. The city has secured now $80 million in funding and is awaiting news on whether or not we'll be the recipient of a $120 million federal grant. Stay tuned for more progress on the I-15 traffic freeway issue. Now, Murrieta Creek, just behind Old Town there, it's another project that's not within the city's jurisdiction, yet it greatly affects our city in terms of safety, flooding, and of course, aesthetics. The Army Corps of Engineers has been at a standstill, unfortunately, with the project for months now, mostly due to funding issues. Uh, they were also planning to eliminate all of the promised landscaping for that project, just leaving it in the condition that it currently is. Uh, again, this is just simply unacceptable. After considerable work in Washington, D.C. and constant communication and lobbying, I anticipate now that the Army Corps of Engineers will complete work on the creek through Old Town this year, including their promise of planting the landscaping and keeping our Old Town a centerpiece of beauty. And I promise we'll continue to advocate for the next phase of that project above Rancho California Road, continuing north on the creek to ensure that we no longer face significant damage or threats from future heavy rains, if it ever in fact rains again. <laughs> this coming fiscal year, we will also complete the design of the Margarita Recreation Center and begin the design of a teen center at Ronald Reagan Sports Park. And for our teenagers, the city has implemented several youth workforce programs to help prepare our young adults for careers, including areas like future physicians, lawyers programs, citywide internships, and our newest trade skills program. I want to congratulate our first construction training graduates and many thanks to Habitat for Humanity for collaborating with the city on this concept. Now, these programs give our youth opportunities and an edge in the real world, keeping them inspired to grow into successful adults. For students that seek higher education degrees, the city organizes one of the largest college fairs in the nation. And look for it again this year in September. 
There will be about 250 universities and colleges uh, uh, represented at the promenade Temecula. Temecula is acquiring all of our 7,500 streetlights from Southern California Edison, and we're converting them to LED lamps with bulbs that last 10 to 15 years compared to the current three to five years. The $8 million investment will realize an energy savings of approximately $700,000 every year. This energy conservation move is also a significant nighttime safety feature for our residents um, because our current street lights, I'm sure you've noticed, produce what we call a monochromatic yellow light, and it inhibits color vision. LED lights, on the other hand, they produce a white light and full spectrum, providing clear and better color rendition. So your blue car isn't going to look brown, uh, which, you know, of course is important. But more importantly, uh, it's, it's so that you and our law enforcement folks are able to see better at night um, and provide our investigators and others with the ability to actually have good information if and when crimes occur. We have already installed these new LED lights throughout Old Town if you'd like to see the difference that this does make. Incidentally, the Western Riverside Energy Partnership awarded the city of Temecula the platinum status, which is the highest status for energy efficiency, where we've saved over 50,000 kilowatt hours at our municipal facilities over the past three years. This reduces our energy demand, improves air quality, and saves money. As I launched Temecula Safe as this year's theme, a special citizen, Brent Jacobson, reached out to me to collaborate on the topic of emergency preparedness. Through his role as an amazing nonprofit helping hands, along with Tracy Hamm, president of California Temecula Stake, we discussed their ideas to help make our community safer and more prepared. I shared their ideas with our other community partners, and within a very few short weeks, all of our local utility companies and Temecula Valley Hospital were on board to help fund what we've described as the Temecula Safe three-minute bag. This three-minute bag will be personally delivered, not by me, but personally delivered to all 34,000 doorsteps in the city of Temecula this June. And get this, it's all happening in just one day. This, uh, uh, included in this three-minute bag is a 12-page special edition newsletter produced by the city that provides emergency preparedness information and safety tips specific to our Temecula residents. This will be dropped off to all residents by the many generous volunteers of Helping Hands. Brent and Tracy, could you please stand up? Thank you so much for making this happen. Uh, the three-minute bags are all included uh, at your chairs, and they have great instructions and wonderful information for you. To truly be a safe city requires a deeper commitment to our community. Safety is everyone's responsibility. It's good for our community, it's good for business, and it's good for our visitors. So the mechanics of the program are to distribute uh, these bags, which will, be, which will contain information that would be helpful to families in the event of a disaster, uh, to every single home in Temecula uh, in one day. So the idea behind the three-minute bag is that in the event of a disaster, there are things that you need to do in the first three minutes, the first three hours, the first three days. Uh, some of the things that all of us have learned by Katrina and other disasters is that government agencies are overwhelmed in the first uh, few minutes of, of any particular disaster. So anything that we can do as individual citizens to prepare ourselves more effectively will be a tremendous help and blessing to those families in those first three minutes, first three hours, and first three days. Very pleased that Helping Hands has decided to make a difference with emergency preparedness in this community, and we're a proud sponsor of that effort. There's be a three-minute bag that's going to be provided to 34,000 homes in this community. Information in there is going to be vital to patient safety for us as well, because there's information about what to do in a heart attack, what to do in a stroke, and what to do in a disaster, and I'm very proud to be part of that. Collaborating on this project with the city, our local utilities, really makes a difference in keeping the community safe. We offer training on a consistent basis to our staff, to our emergency providers. We have large tents, we have large storage of the safety equipment here on site at the hospital. 
Um, seven days worth of supplies should we lose power or any other services to the hospital and all of our staff are trained for that dire event should it occur. Part of our community is the belief that we should be our brother's keeper. In other words, that we should take care of one another. And this particular uh, program or initiative really helps us as a community to, to consider each other's needs. It's our responsibility as individuals in the community to be a part of that community. To, uh, to not consider ourselves individual, but rather a part of a greater whole. And that's uh, one of the things that my wife and I have always loved about the city of Temecula. Important to a community is the health of its hospital. Um, people come and move to an area where they feel like they have access to physicians, access to a high quality hospital. This also brings jobs to the community. We now have 850 employees here at the hospital 350 physicians are also part of this hospital. They all live and work in this community and use community services, which helps with the community's economic viability, as well as the fact that when we are expanding the hospital, this is a $42 million expansion where we're adding 29,000 square feet. It's a huge investment back into this community. So in Temecula, public safety rises to the top, not just for ourselves or for our family, but for our neighbors too. Delivering three minute bags to 34,000 doorsteps to raise awareness of being prepared for natural disasters or a citywide emergency is unique to Temecula. Uh, this isn't a state or national program, although it really should be. It's the people, volunteers, and organizations in this incomparable city working together toward one cause that made this all possible. And speaking of working together, or maybe a little bit of competition, um, it looks like we have some fabulous centerpieces here on our tables today. Uh, I think this is the second year we've done this right, uh, and uh, we get to have over 60 local businesses present a centerpiece. Uh, it was very difficult to choose, but we do have winners for two of those centerpieces. Can we have some envelopes? This is like the, uh, the Emmys, but for centerpieces. Super exciting. All right, the Community Choice Award will go to Temecula Creek Inn. Congratulations. And of course, the Mayor's Choice Award goes to Eat Marketplace. I was gonna pick San Marcos, but everybody know that I was biased. So, you know, I had to let it go. Uh, each of these winners will receive a beautiful crystal award and a $50 gift card to Blue Water Grill, uh, as well as a bottle of Europa Village wine. The winner, thank you. All right, so, uh, you know, one of the things that I think is uh, uh, more important for our community is our ability to uh, uh, be a safe city, but also provide that sort of critical foundation and first step toward a balanced community with the variety of city events and community services uh, that we provide for our citizens and our visitors, where thousands of people gather in Old Town or our parks, at our facilities, or for special occasions. Or, how about the wine country, where the Balloon and Wine Festival is happening this weekend. I hope to see everybody there. Our collective commitment to fiscal responsibility, community services, and public safety help make this possible. These events help fuel our economy, where a night out at the theater, or watching the TEDx event in Old Town, or a concert in front of City Hall by our amazing Temecula Valley Symphony, or joining the Merck on Thursday night jazz night. Uh, this often includes dinner at local restaurants, shopping nearby, and so on. The Temecula Valley Museum greeted over 24,000 visitors with seven museum exhibits, 12 programs, and more than 80 tours, including 30 school trips uh, from our local schools. Look for their new children's book, A History of Temecula, to be published in the fall. Our wonderful children's museum, Penny Pickles, has served over 33,000 visitors 
and 4,600 school ch children just in this past year. And it continues to be a centerpiece of science-based entertainment and education in Old Town for young and those young at heart. Uh, keeping our youth engaged in safe and constructive activities throughout the year, it also provides jobs to local instructors. I'm told the city now has over 100 camp options this summer advertised in our latest recreational guide. Further demonstrating the positive effects and economic nexus between a safe and prosperous community that has access to arts and entertainment, our city was featured in Western City Magazine this month. Temecula's art and culture support a thriving economy. Highlighting Temecula's esteemed Helen Putnam Award, which for local government is kind of like winning a Grammy for the category of economic development through the arts. We are engaging our business community while touching old and young lives with positive opportunities and memories to cherish. To make you safe means that we provide dedicated maintenance of our infrastructure and facilities, parks and playgrounds. We're maintaining safe soccer fields and sports parks and replacing aging playground equipment for our children. Over the past six months, we have had five playgrounds completely rebuilt and reimagined with amazing new themes. They are treehouse themed, Old West themed with a monorail, music themed with instruments, and even a pirate ship theme. Also, diverse community activities and special events in music, theater, arts, and cultural programs help expose our youth to amazing new ideas, amazing new opportunities, and positive growth. It's good for our community, it's good for business, and it's good for our visitors. So, uh, so I'm going to leave you with a few statistics. Uh, Temecula is ranked the 15th safest city in the United States, according to la latest study, which uses FBI statistics. We have been ranked, oh, look at that, <laughs> Woo, safe city. <laughs> we have been ranked as the third best place to live in California. We are recognized among the top 50 best cities to live in America. Now is better than any other time to be invested in Temecula as we build upon a safe community together and protect our most precious resources, our people. I hope you all have a great morning and thank you everyone for being here today. Take a picture.